somebody says, what is neuropsychology? How would you define it to them? I guess the simple way would be it's brain behavior relationships, but I like to distinguish it from maybe looking at, uh, at neurology, because you think of neurologists as, as being the people looking at, at the brain, and I look at the brain as well. There's quite a bit of overlap, but there's also some critical differences as well. Uh, generally, neurologists are more interested in the physiology of the brain, uh, the anatomy of the brain, looking at any medical problems that arise because of that. And, and so their focus is, in many cases, less on the behavior and the emotions than it really is much more in what's going on with the brain. So I like to think of them, to use a loose analogy, as if we had a car that's being brought into a shop. The neurologist is sort of the guy that looks under the hood, does the tune-up, decides how he can make the car run more smoothly. If it requires maybe major mechanical repairs, that's where we get the neurosurgeon involved. But ultimately, someone has to take that car out for a test drive. And that's what the neuropsychologist does. It takes what's going on with your brain and it tries to see how you function in daily life. So that if you're having your car backfiring, it's not gonna run as efficiently. If you have certain forms of dysfunction of the brain, you're not gonna function as well. So we look at those different areas and we try to see how it relates to the brain and in turn, how that might impact your daily functioning. I like that analogy, Arnie. So tell me, how is a neuropsychologist different than a psychiatrist or a neuropsychiatrist? Well, again, as with the neurologist, I think that there's a lot of overlap, but there's also important differences as well. So if you have a neurologist, if you have a neuropsychiatrist or psychiatrist, their training is uh, in medicine. They, they go to medical school. And mm -hmm. so by necessity, unless you have a special training such, such as you do, Dan, in psychoanalysis, oftentimes the emphasis is much more along the biomedical model. And so if you're going to a psychiatrist or a neuropsychiatrist, of course they want to figure out what's going on with the brain, but frequently their avenue to treatment will be much more by pharmacology using various medications. So if you have a seizure disorder, they may give you certain medications. If you have a mood disorder, anxiety disorder, if you have a variety of problems that may be due to things like stroke or head trauma, which we're going to be talking about, uh, there's a number of emotional, personality, psychiatric disorders that can emerge from that. And they will generally approach that much more from a medical approach. Good psychiatrists, good neuropsychiatrists clearly about the brain behavior relationships, as do neuropsychologists. So that's probably where we overlap. But where neuropsychologists, I think, differ from the medical professionals is that our training is an extensive evaluation of personality and emotion and behaviors and, and cognition. And we are trained, obviously, to observe these problems from a qualitative or clinical perspective, but also we are trained in a number of standardized tests that take a look at how a person's functioning uh, will be manifest after brain dysfunction or even in the normal person after something is suspected or is wrong with the brain. I think probably in the general public, people are familiar with things like IQ tests. Okay, mm -hmm. or in school, we've had academic achievement tests. Now, what these are, it differs from if I would interview you, do a clinical interview, or a psychiatrist or a neuropsychiatrist would interview you. They're, of course, probing your cognition, they're probing your intelligence. But to a greater or lesser extent, that's really just kind of scratching the surface. Uh, when you do something like an IQ test, it takes a couple of hours. It looks at all sorts of domains of intellectual functioning, including many that you simply can't uncover by an interview. When you're psychologists, uh, we always have people do things like trying to put the square peg into the round hole. I'm kidding, mm -hmm. of course, but you know, putting together blocks or puzzles, things that you really can't get at just by talking to someone. But then we'll look at vocabulary. We'll look at someone's ability to understand the world. And so that ultimately, after a couple of hours, we have scoured quite a bit of terrain, how one's brain is able to function intellectually. But we go beyond that. We do the same thing with memory. We do the same thing with problem solving and reasoning, perception and language, and, and so on. So usually the sort of testing we do can take three, four, five, six hours. Mm -hmm. And by that time, I would like to say that we try to leave no neuron unturned. 
Oh. And, and so in essence, when you ask people to do certain uh, cognitive tasks, uh, you, if you will, light up certain areas of the brain, other cognitive tasks light up other areas of the brain. And so by giving a comprehensive battery, uh, we try to assess as much of the brain real estate as we can. And in that way, not only can we give you a fairly comprehensive picture of how a person functions in all these different realms, but we can use that information as well to be able to diagnose where in the brain we may have some problems.